Oh God, come to my assistance. Oh Lord, make haste to help me. Open thou my lips and my open thou my mouth and my lips shall proclaim your praise. Conversion. What are all those little things that some people do when praying the Liturgy of the Hours but aren't in all the books? So you know I talk all the time about the little cross symbols that you find in different prayer books. And some of them look like a plus sign and some of them are like a little crusader's cross and some of them like a sword. And some of them do not appear in this book at all. I couldn't find one, not even in the explanations. This is the... You probably know it better by the inside cover, the Catholic book publishing, Little Office of the Blessed Virgin Mary that was done in 1988. I couldn't find a single place where you're supposed to make the sign of the cross or anything. It's not mentioned in the text at all, in the directions, and there's no symbols at all. Very confusing. What are they doing here? I don't get that. You could make the argument that everybody knows. Yeah, that's a lame argument, and not everybody knows, and it is important. So then you know how much I love the little office of Baltimore. Is it in here? Are there any symbols? I did find two. There may be more. Here's why. Um, I have it marked. It's just this little black text plus sign. So there may be more and I might have missed them. There's one there in the office of Prime where it's after the Confitor, the I confess to Almighty God and to Blessed Mary, ever virgin. So when you're doing the absolution at the end, the second part, the all, may the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. There's one other spot. I found one. Let me see if I can find it on this page. At the end of Compline the Blessing, may the Almighty and merciful Lord bless us and protect us. Oops. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So this one's supposed to come after the word Father. They're not always at the beginning of lines, which I always thought they were, because people are randomly putting them in where they aren't in books. And so I've been trying to guess off other people. So this one is after the word Father and before the word Son, and the other one was between pardon and absolution. Those That could be important. Like, I don't know. Um, I did try to look through the entire book, including the directions. That's the only one I could find. I was a little shocked about that. So then I'm going to the little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And what is the edition of this one? This is the Latin and English. In the two, I think this is 2020, Baronius Press, in conformity with the 1961 Edito Typica of the Roman Breviary. Um, and it was everywhere in here. I won't lie, is everywhere. I didn't even bother looking everywhere because it's everywhere. Just the random sample I came up um, when we say, oh God, see, it has it both here in the English and in the Latin, oh God, and then come to my assistance. Oh Lord, make haste to help me. Um, where else was it? Let's find another one here. Again, for terse, oh Oh God, come to my assistance. So right after the word God, do, 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 do. we could have fun all day. It's also in sext. It's in that same spot. We, Oops, did I skip? I did skip louds. Um, I'm getting louds. Oh God, come to my assistance. Oh Lord, make haste to help me. I thought there would be more places in here. So it seems to be that one section in the opening of the office. Sorry about this. I really thought that it was in more places than this one. It's just that there's so much you have all these nocturnes and everything. Let's look. It is easier to find in here because it's going to be in red. So I'm flipping through. Do, 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 do. Aha! This is one where I was looking for them. Now, it's not marked differently. See, thou shalt open my lips. And then there's the symbol, O Lord. And then again, O God, come to my assistance, Lord, make haste to help me. When it's thou shalt open my lips, O Lord, you should be making the cross. I think it's with your thumb over your lips. And in the one that talks about conversion, it should be over your heart. There is also a place where it asks you to fall to your knees and worship the God who made you. I'm pretty sure that's in this edition. Not sure what hour that would be to get around the um remember this one has oh this one has something else in the back it has the 
Gregorian chant in the back of the chant. Um, here's another place it is. In the Magnificat, it should be after the word Magnificat, or if you're saying it in English, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. So it's before the big canticle. Each hour has a big canticle in it, and that is supposed to come in that big hour. Um... I'm not, of course, I'm not going to find the thing I thought it was going to be obvious where it said to fall down on your knees. Well, I'm going to skip over that then. So then I went to the big book here. And like, honestly, I thought it was in this book. This is volume four of the Liturgy of the Hours, Ordinary Times, weeks 18 to 34. This is the one that we're in right now. I thought it was in here. And you know, the closest I could find is in the ordinary on page 615. It says God. And then, and then there's a superscript, number one. And I'm thinking, yay, there's going to be a note about this. So God, number one, come to my assistance. And I'm thinking it's going to be telling you to do this. No, it says for musical purposes, the invocation God may be expanded. For example, you could say God, our father, Lord God, or oh God. But it does not tell you to make the sign of the cross. And I actually couldn't find it. I thought, oh, it's going to be in the Te Deum. It's going to be in the Canticles. It's not there. Is it on the little card version of the Canticles that go in the middle? Not there. Not there in the inventory. Not there in the doxology. It's not here. It's it's just not here. It's so bizarre. It's so bizarre. Um, I will say I did check my apps quick and I did find it. Um, I use the Brev Mayum app, the 1960 rubrics. It is there. It's totally there. It has different um, markings for different ones. It's pretty clear what you're doing. And I think it was, it's not in divine office. I don't think I could find it in divine office um, or there was just like one or two. And there's one more I use. I breviary. I breviary had some as well, not as many as Brev Ma'am or the little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So if you know of any other symbols um, that you have found, put them down in the comments below to help everyone out. In the meantime, I'm just going to do a short little thing here because I got my next edition of the Benedictus and I want to give you a little preview. Again, it's probably too late for you to get this copy, but you can go ahead and get your order in now to get December because that's going to be a big deal, folks, December. So this is the November edition. Ooh. You love that you get a prayer card that matches the cover art. It's so amazing. I haven't decided yet because I may be donating these um, if they'll take them to the prison that's down the road. Um, and so then I have to decide to leave the prayer card in or not. That's a tough one because I'm giving up the whole book, which does have a lot of prayers and really good resource material in it. So I may end up keeping this. I don't know. Um, let's see what's in here. It's just so so beautiful off the bat. Um, it has the same little introductory quotes as I think the last one. Let's see here. Virtue of the month, apostolic encouragement. What on earth does that mean? I don't know, but I'm going to learn. Select prayers. What prayers are in here? Let's see. Oh, it has, it has the prayers, same prayers as last time. That's really good because... I was kind of worried about that. It's one of the reasons I wanted to hold on to it. I was like, what? I don't want to give this up. I love this. Um, interesting. This one says in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Interesting that the symbol is put in the middle. So maybe the symbol isn't exactly where you say the words. So there. I am glad we opened it up. We just learned something right there. Um, do I see any more of those symbols? I wasn't expecting that. Lovely artwork. Here it is on um, some of the selected prayers. I don't think this was in before. Indulgence prayer before a crucifix, an act of resignation to the divine will. So I think that's a new one. And you love that artwork. Again, it tells you later that they're all in the um, public domain. Here is the seasonal antiphon. And again, that's going to be, I think, yeah, it's going to be in English and in Latin, and they give you the song for it. An Advent antiphon. Are we that close to Advent? Oh my goodness, friends. Oh yeah, this is November, so right, right, right. <laughs> Fair enough. 
And again, the Asperges we start out with. All Saints Day. Of course it starts with All Saints Day. I'm so silly sometimes. I just get so excited. Um, let's see if I can find any more of those symbols. Oh, <gasps> devotions for holy souls. We were just talking about this, doing like a secular Franciscan wake service sort of thing, but to honor the dead in our fraternities. Our fraternity will have a mass for our deceased members, but I've been looking at things to do to honor them every month or even pick a day of the week, maybe that I pray for the deceased members. Devotion for holy souls. Oh, general requirements for obtaining a plenary indulgence. Who knew this was going to be in here? Indulgence to X for holy souls. Oh, there's a bunch of them that you can do in November. Like visit a cemetery with mental prayer for holy souls. Um, and there's other, and it gives you the dates for all these. I'm not going to give you all that. It's in here. Order yourself a Benedictus. Um, there's another day where you say six our fathers, hail Marys, and glory bees in a church or oratory. Um, there's some other ones in here for partials. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, that's so wonderful. And that's all in here. There's even a, a little holy hours for holy souls. Oh, how lovely. Now this says, it has the, O Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. And it doesn't have the symbol in here. So it's haphazard. I think you really just have to be taught that you need to do those. I really would like books, prayer books to start putting those back in because we've lost a lot of our elders rejected this outright and so they're not teaching it to us and partially because they weren't taught right i'm not judging them here um lovely 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 oh, like i'm freaking out um yeah i'm just freaking out this is going to be a lovely addition <sighs> it's so funny just flipping through the pages even just makes me so so happy in here Canada the Mass, Holy Mass. Did you know, oh, there's a big article on burial rates. I hope you can still get a November edition because it's just so lovely. Oh, I'm just so excited to even read these. I am, it's, it's kind of ridiculous how excited I am for November, but I think that's because the whole Memento Mori thing I have going on. People were asking me about my crochet and I did get the pattern. Um, do I have the author's name? Let me see. It's on here. This is by Jarda Jasmine. Oh, oh, it says Jarda Jasmine, but it says the pattern was written by Melody Martinez and it's called Memento Mori. And you can see why it's a totally a scarf that has skulls on it. And some people have done different edgings on it. Some just had the basic one as simple tassels, but somebody added a ruffled edge. And I'm honestly thinking of instead of using these fillet crochet uh, little blocks here, they're calling them uh, shells. I wouldn't call that a shell. I'm, I would call this a fillet crochet uh, block. Um, instead of doing those, I may be doing a little bit more lace work, you know, just the chain five, single chain, chain five, single chain. So you get a loop and then when you come back, you put the single chain in the loops and there's a loop. So it's kind of like um, fish scales kind of that pattern where it's like this and then there's one like this and then one like this. I may do it that way to make it a little bit more lacy because um, it doesn't have to be stark and masculine. <laughs> um, so that's my thought on that. So yeah, Memento Mori. So I'm making this. People are like, are you going to have it done by Halloween? It's not for Halloween, but I will probably have it done for All Saints and All Souls Days. <laughs> oh, God bless you, friends. Um, Let's go ahead um and read i think last time we did the glory be out of here so let's go ahead and look at that again it's in the beginning um this is on page seven so we'll practice our glory be in latin in nomine patri et filii et spiritus sancti amen gloria patri et filio et spiritui sancto sequel erat in principio et nunc et semper et in secula seculorum. Amen. In nomine patris et filii et spiritus sancti. Amen. And you'll notice, friends, that the endings on patris, filii, and spiritus sancti, they don't have the same endings in the glory be. In the glory be, it's patri instead of patris. It's filio instead of filii, and spiritui sancto instead of spiritus sancti. I know I'm overseeing the spirit we. I apologize. I'll get there one day. <laughs> I'm over enunciating that. Um, because the other one isn't 
in the name of the Father. And this is glory be to the Father. It's a little bit different case. Um, in the name of, I think, would be a possessive case, right? Like the Father's name, the Son's name, the Spirit's name. And this is at the end of a preposition. So it's a different case. So that's why it has a different ending. And then, secut erat in principio, as it was in the beginning. I wonder, I am guessing that secut means as, erat is, it was, and then principio must be in the beginning, which makes sense, principle, principality, you know, prince um, being first, et nunc, which we know is and now, et semper, is semper fidelis, right, always, and always, ever shall be. And then et in secula seculorum, and in secula seculorum must be the world without end. That one's a little trickier to see, but you can get it. And then amen, I think you've got that. Let's try it all together once again. And this one's really standard. I think you understand it as you say it, like the sign of the cross, you can understand it pretty easily in Latin, but it's a good foundational one. It's laying a foundation for you to build up your Latin skills. So let's go ahead and do it. In nomine patris, et filii, et spiritus sancti. Amen. Gloria patri, et filio, et spiritui sancto. Secret erat in principio, et nunc, et semper, et in secula, seculorum. Amen. In nomine patris, et filii, et spiritus sancti. Amen. God bless you, friends. Bye.